So let's start with hypnosis. When I say hypnosis, what is the first thing you think of? If you're like most people, you think of like the guy with a stopwatch, pocket watch, and says, look into my eyes, you are getting sleepy, right? And basically, mo modern hypnosis is nothing like this anymore. Um, and I could say, because I'm a person who has studied hypnosis before, that hypnosis is pretty real. It is exactly like you think. When you see hypnotist, you might think of uh, the stage performer. Maybe at a school party or some other on TV, you've seen someone do stage hypnosis. Uh, and so that's really entertaining, right? People come up to stage to get hypnotized, think they're chickens or start dancing, um, something like that. Uh, but actually, hypnosis applications are much more varied and the contents are still very different. So first of all, let's talk about what are some some aspects of hypnosis, right? What are some characteristics of it? First of all, the person seems like to be in a trance. They're unaware of their surrounding state, kind of like asleep but reactive at the same time. Uh, there's some, some certain characteristics like, for example, they have post-hypnotic um, amnesia. Uh, they don't remember anything that happened when they were under hypnosis. So they wake up and say, oh, what just happened? It's like they ha there's no time was lost. Uh, there's a uh, suggestibility to, uh, the hyper-suggestibility, if the hypnotist suggests them do something or feel something, it becomes very realistic to them. Uh, there's a hyper-focus. People think that in this case people are asleep and unaware, but it's really the opposite that's occurring. It's uh, people are going to translate because they're very focused on one thing, which is relaxation. So you might have been in a translate before when you're like driving uh, and you kind of lose sight of time and location because you just drove a long way, right? Something like you wake up and say, oh, how did I get here from there? I don't remember anything in between. So that's basically like a trance state when you're hyper-focused on one topic, uh, on something, and then you just not pay attention to anything else. Uh, in this case, in hypnosis, people think it's because you pay a lot of attention and focus on the uh, instructions on relaxation from the hypnotist. Um, whether this is real or not depends on how you define what hypnosis is. There's certain ideas of how hypnosis works. Uh, the first one is role theory, and this is a very, very social approach to understanding hypnosis. Basically, they found that people uh, have different kind of suggestibility scores, uh, hypnotizability. Some, some, some people are a lot easier to hypnotize, and some people are not. Uh, so what are characteristics of people who are highly uh, easy to hypnotize? Uh, they're usually very good at daydreaming. Uh, they like to daydream and think and fantasize a lot, have a very rich inner fantasy life. They're people who are very agreeable, they take directions really well, right? And so that kind of makes sense with this role theory is that when people are hypnotized in this, in this sense, they're not really in a different state, they just become very suggestible because they want to play along with the hypnotist, they really agree with them, they want to be obedient and obey them, and they could really easily fantasize things. So in this case, they're not turned into a different state at all, they're just really uh, following the role of what it's like to be hypnotized, right? That's one idea. Another theory is a state theory. This people believe that, well, being hypnotized, hypnotized is a different state. It's not being awake, it's not sleeping, and it's something completely different. It has attributes of both. So th these people think that the conscious experience of being hypnotized puts them in a different kind of category of, um, of consciousness. Compare that to dis the, the dis dissociative theory, which says that even though the person is under, there's still different levels of consciousness. I'll give you an example of, of what people mean by that. Uh, they did a study where um, when there's, people have used hypnosis as pain control, where they put their hands, uh, when they're hypnotized, they put their hands in like a really cold bucket of water, and they say, well, you, do, you don't feel anything. It's a very comfortable bucket of water. And when you ask them, oh, how does it feel? They say, oh, it feels great. Right? So they think, oh, this must be a different state. However, if they said that, well, if you believe it's cold, just raise your other hand. And most of the time, the other person, they, they raise their hand, even though it's really cold. So there's kind of a, disassociate, a disassociation between the reporting and the feeling. They say it's not cold, but then there's still an observer in them that reports that um, it's still cold. So they have some awareness of what's going on. And so those, these are just some different theories of what hypnosis is. Is it a different state? Or is it just people playing along and acting? Or is it just like multiple layers of consciousness that are layered on the top of each other? So I want to talk about some of the facts and myths about hypnosis. And the first one is, can anyone experience it? Can everyone be hypnotized? And the answer is yes and no. Mainly, yes uh, no. Uh, people who want to be hypnotized are more likely to be hypnotized They want to be willing. People who are skeptical and cynical, less likely to do so because they actively fight it. Uh, like I said, there's different kind of hypnotizability scores. Uh, there's biological um, instances that help you uh, be hypnotized faster and others that don't. 
Uh, usually people who are smarter, who are better at imagination and concentrating are better at being hypnotized because really hypnosis is a state of focus, right? And so if you're kind of scatterbrained and you can't really focus, you're not going to get into hypnosis as easy. So that's one of the myths. Can hypnosis be used to retrieve forgotten memories? And this is a kind of controversial topic because um, in America, there's a lot of cases where um, the adult is not has some kind of disorder and can't figure out why, goes to see a, a therapist, the therapist, therapist puts them under, and they retrieve some kind of repressed hidden memory. Usually they involve like sexual abuse or violence in the childhood that the person has forgotten. And these have become the basis of a lot of uh, litigation lawsuits against uh, people who have abused them. And yet, the, the verity of hypnosis itself has been, uh, you know, whether forgotten memories can be dug up like this, has been confronted. And the re results are mixed. Uh, and one of the problems is that when people are under hypnosis, they're just b open to suggestions and they kind of uh, can make things up. They become hyper-suggestible and they have a rich imagination to fill in the gap. Um, and so if you ask them to age regress, for example, and they try to imagine what age is like there, it's not a, an exact, remember, uh, exact memory of what's happening. Um, they're just building up a, f a fantasy life as they go. Case in point is that when people are under hypnosis, you could actually implant new memories. You could ask them to remember things that you know for sure never happened, and people can still make up information, fill those gaps in, and make it seem very realistic. It, uh, Sigmund Freud himself was very interested in hypnosis as a way to get at these uh, subconscious impulses. At first, that uh, he put people under and then interview them, kind of have them free associate and see what they think as a way to get people's memory. Later on, he kind of uh, refuted this line of research now because he thought when people are under hypnosis, they're really too suggestible. That sometimes it's easy for the hypnotist to implant their own feelings, ideas into the subject because of this increased uh, suggestibility. Can people act against their will? This is a common one. Can you be hypnotized and then asked to kill someone or kill yourself? And the answer is no, because people under hypnosis still have a pretty good sense of what's happening around them, and they still have their moral cold with them. Uh, if they don't want to do something, they'll just reject the hypnotist's suggestion. So the answer is no. Uh, can hypnosis and therapy, can they go together? Can they go together? And the answer is yes. A lot of uh, ther therapy does involve some level of hypnosis relaxation. In this case, it opens up the patient to more um, free associate, like I said in Freudian ideas, uh, to, set, to kind of imagine uh, uh, situations that re reduce anxiety. So for example, if the patient has a phobia or high anxiety about certain situations, being in hypnosis allows them to walk through those situations in a safe kind of manner. Finally, can hypnosis be used to alleviate pain? And the answer is yes. Uh, people in, under hypnosis can be highly distracted or instructed not to feel pain. Um, so like I, I told you, there's a, the case of the cold water. Hypnosis has also been used in childbirth where under hypnosis, the mother actually felt very much less pain because of the, uh, um, they've been trained to relax and to kind of ignore the pain. So hypnosis has definitely some truth and some myths involved in there. And it's kind of hard to tease the, uh, these apart. Again, what causes hypnosis is a, a different theories. It could be psychological, it could be biological, or it could be social. Like, uh, like we talked about, the biological ones are some people are just genetically prone to be hypnotized. They're more likely to be hypnotized. Uh, and those who are psycho psychological theories might involve people who want to be hypnotized, more motivated to be hypnotized. Um, and the social theories, which is like the interpersonal idea, is that these are people who are very obedient and they want to please people, and so they act hypnotized. So all three of these kind of factors roll into uh, how people are, feel when they get hypnotized.